from our entire world population, only 38% uses the internet. And that's why a few years ago, I wanted to know how my own life would change if I didn't have, have a computer or an internet connection. So I started a project which was called From Digital to Analog, in which I didn't use a computer or use the internet for two whole months. Not in my private life, not in my professional life. And during these two months, I also started an analog blog, which is almost the same as a digital one, except now I would write my blog posts on a typewriter, I would copy them on a stencil machine, and I would send them to my blog readers by the traditional post system. And every week I would write about how my own life would change for me as a digital native, without a computer or an internet connection. And one of the biggest changes was the change in my mindset. My brain ceased to work as a computer. Instead of using, um, instead of multitasking, hyperactive and very insufficient, my work habits and my thoughts became very calm, precise, and uh, multitasking went back to single tasking. And after a few weeks in the, into the project, I started asking the very same questions to my blog readers. How would your life change if you didn't have a computer? And that's when I received a lot of really beautiful handwritten letters from people all over the Netherlands and even Belgium, from different backgrounds and from different generations. And they were all writing me how their life would change if they didn't have a computer. So after two months, I knew how my own life would change, and I knew how Dutch people thought about it. But what a teenager would write in the Netherlands was almost the exact same thing as a woman in her 60s or 70s. Because in the Netherlands, everybody has a computer and everybody has internet. And that made me think, how would people feel about digital technology in places where it isn't that common, where it isn't that widely available? In other words, does the influence of digital technology differ per culture? And to answer all these questions, I started a new project, which was called Life Needs Internet. And for Life Needs Internet, I traveled to places that represented the extreme opposite of my Western access to digital technology. For example, the jungle in West Papua, where I met people who had never heard of the concept of internet, <laughs> to a hypermodern city like Singapore, where digital technology controls society even more than here in the West. And everywhere I went, I asked local people to handwrite me a letter in their own native language in which I described the influence of digital technology on their daily lives. So after seven months of traveling, I returned back to the Netherlands with over 50 uh, handwritten letters from different cultures and all written in different languages. And when all the translations were done and I could actually read all the letters, I created a video, video installation with, with them, with eight of them. And these eight people and their letters portrayed a complete evolution of our global digitalization and its impact on different cultures. It starts with a man named Isaac from West Papua who does not know his precise age, has no occupation, and when I asked him, can you try to explain what you think the internet is, he said, internet is culture. And four letters later, an Indian woman in a mountain village Darjeeling writes, someone who doesn't use the computer is missing out in life which is kind of ironic because she herself doesn't own a computer, she has to go to the internet cafe. And again, four letters later, a Dutch woman writes, digital information has made modern men suffer from digital incontinence. And I did not create Leibniz Internet as a criticism, it's merely a snapshot of our still ever-expanding digitalization. And it doesn't give you any strict or simple answers about our global digitalization, is it good or is it bad? but it does trigger an unawareness about our own digital behavior and about questions like, does life need internet? And how would your life change if you didn't have a computer or an internet connection? And the beautiful paradox of life needs internet is that it uses a traditional medium, the handwritten letter, in a very personal and intimate way to portray a global digital process. And it is in this way that life needs internet becomes a multicultural artifact and artifacts are, are there for us to learn about the past and the future. And just as scientist uh, Laszlo Barabasi said, without cultural artifacts, humanity has no memory. And without its memory, it cannot learn from its successes or failures. So I hope you all, um, I hope this talk made you wonder about your own digital behavior. And if you feel the need to write me a letter, you can do this to this address. <laughs> Thank you.